Chief reminded me of a couple of stories involving myself and Chief. That, mate, honestly, I was crying with laughter. The first one, it's one I've never told on this show. It was, oh, I'd forgotten about it. It was about, it was about 2006. And the footy show, we went up and we went up to shoot some things like the Vomitron. Remember the, oh, the Vomitron? Yes. The, Gold Coast. Yeah, I know. And, well, what we did the night before at the Gold Coast, myself, Chief, Fatty and Sturlow went to Jupiter's Casino. Mm. And we walked in and, and Chief is, mate, the world's nicest bloke. And when, But when it comes to certain things, fairly naive. Mm. And the boys go, how about we sit down and have a, hey, uh, let's grab a table and play blackjack. So it's just us. We said, yep, good as gold. So we're sitting there four along. And Chief's right in the middle, and Sturlow's basically straight after Chief. Now, everyone knows when you play blackjack, there's certain things. That, you know, that, that the dealer can't hold on 16, yep. et cetera, et cetera. But, however, if, if the dealer's got a 6 and you've got a 14, if you're playing by yourself, oftentimes you'll sit. But you should take a card, even though the chances are you'll lose, because it looks after the other players that's on right, the table. Yeah. Yeah. And the, th- the feeling is what goes around comes around. And that's why it gets a little bit scary playing on a table with experienced players, because... There are certain rules and regulations and protocols to blackjack that if you don't follow them to the letter, mate, they get filthy. (laughs) So we're sitting there, and Chief's got no idea what he's doing. And the dealer throws up a six. Chief's got a 13. And Chief goes, you know what? I'm just going to (laughs) sit. So the the dealer turns around and goes, bang, bang, and Sturlo loses 100 bucks, right? (laughs) Sturlo goes, mate, right. (laughs) You gotta right next time, mate. Don't do it. You can look after yourself at the table. And Chief goes, "Hey, hey, hey, Pete. I'm just looking after myself, mate." And Chief's like, "I'm going. Oh, this is here we go." <laughs> next time, bang again. So basically, in five minutes, Sturlo loses about five hundred bucks. Oh, oh. He would have had a laugh about Stur- that though. S- St- <laughs> um, <laughs> Sturlo goes, mate, berserk, and he's given it to Chief. So Chief goes, mate. So Chief gets up, goes to the ATM, gets 300 bucks out, right? And goes and goes, there you are, you cranky old bastard. <laughs> <laughs> there you are. There's your 300 bucks. And we know how much Chief loves money. So Stillo gets it and just throws the money over his shoulder, right? And all these desperate punters just swoop on the 50s. Right? Oh. So Chief, so it, and it's all over. So, mate, we had to get between them. To break oh, them up. Oh. They, it, was, it got that fiery. Oh. The other one was about three weeks later, we'd gone to New Zealand, right? And we're we and we're doing bungee jumping all these different things mm. and um and Chief as you know is the world's nicest bloke and Chief's got he's a bit like Mal Meninga wherever Chief goes people goes oh it's the Chief Paul Harrigan yeah. here he comes so what I would do is like I would get ahead of Chief so I'd, I'd jump out I when we got to the hotel I got out really early and the concierge <laughs> manager goes welcome guys and he goes uh, and I said oh the the Chief's on his way he goes I know he goes we're all very excited to see him I said can I just have a quiet word to you about Chief he goes oh yeah sure. <laughs> I said, look, I don't know how to say this. I said, look, Chief's quite a heavy drinker. Um, <laughs> he's extremely poor. He, he's extremely bad tempered. Oh. And I said, but worse the lot, he's a kleptomaniac. <laughs> I said, so if there's anything of worth around here, mate, pens or anything, mate, he'll take it and he'll steal it. It'll be gone. So we're, che- we're checking. He goes, oh, yeah, oh, oh, really? Okay, no problem. I said, mate, for instance, if you don't want all the pens that are there for checking in, mate, I said, they'll be gone. So while the guy was looking, I actually took the pens and went away. And the bloke actually chipped him and said, oh, Mr. Harrigan, you know, a bit of a laugh and you get the pens back. <laughs> didn't know he thought about it. The next day, we went to bungee jumping, right? And this bloke who runs the bungee, he had a little kiosk there at the bungee jumping centre and people are going in and out. So, mate, he is so excited, mate. The footy show's arriving and here comes Paul the Chief Harrigan. So I grabbed the bloke and I said, listen, mate, it's got to tell you something. I said, the Chief? He goes, yes. Oh, mate, I can't wait to get a photo with the Chief. I said, mate, I've got bad news for you. So I said, he's in a filthy mood. I said, but the, wor- but the worst thing is, mate, I said, Chief's... Mate, a klepto. I said, mate, all this stuff, all your chips and that. I said, if you don't want them stolen, you've got to put them away. So the bloke, so the bloke's got there, right? And he's rushing around, pushing, putting his chips and putting his lollies and his gum and putting his drinks away and everything like that. And Chief walks in and he's so enthusiastic. And he goes, oh, wow, mate. How you going, big fella? Nice store you got here. And the bloke goes, oh, mate. Uh, sorry, could, would you mind leaving the store wear clothes? <laughs> <laughs> on the plane ride home, anyway, on the way back, on, on, on the flight back, and Chief says to me, oh, it's a good trip, Chief. He goes, i tell you what, Chimpy. He goes, it was weird, mate. He said, everywhere I went, 
He said, people were really strange. And I I said, mate, I've got a confession. This is what I told Mate, Chief didn't talk to me for oh. a month. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it was- you've taken him apart, his poor personality. And let me tell I told him, I said, when we get to Katmandu, she's on again. She's on again. Yes. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs>